my name is Cheryl and I teach the computer classes at the main library and so we're doing these all by zoom now for uh, the foreseeable future all right so today's class is PowerPoint intro to PowerPoint PowerPoint um, if you've never used it is um, a program that lets you do presentations it basically takes the place of a slideshow a slide projector so I'm going to talk about how to create the slides, um, how to rearrange things using templates, and I'm also, as I go along, going to talk about tips and tricks on doing presentations. I'm going to share my screen, and then I have PowerPoint opened up. So this is what PowerPoint looks like when you start it up. If you have any files that you have recently been opened up and working on, they will be over here. If you've not done anything recently, made any presentations, um, they will, they, this might be blank. Over here, we have options of template styles. You can create a blank template and set it all up yourself. And normally I don't use templates except in PowerPoint. In PowerPoint, I find it much easier to just use one of the templates uh, because I'm not a graphic designer and these are already made for us and it's easiest to use it. Now, if you choose one of these, don't worry about the color scheme. You're like, oh, this is boring colors, a bunch of blues, some grays, some browns. You can change the colors while still keeping the layout. And how you do this is you will uh, just click on one. And it will give you the first page. And these are your pre-made colors your color schemes. Now you can even do something different than this. I will be showing you later how to completely change the color scheme. Um, you could choose a, a red color scheme or a yellow color scheme. Uh, later on you can customize it to your heart's content. Uh, right now I'm just going to choose, let's say I'm going to choose the purple one. Okay and then I click create and it gives me a slide. It starts you out on what we call a title slide. This is the slide that you are supposed to have up on your screen, uh, on the screen as people are coming in and sitting down to your presentation. So this should have the title and any subtitles. So the title of your presentation where it says click, you just click in that box. You'll get a um, You'll get the box and you'll get a cursor, blinking cursor. Blinking cursor means you can type. And you type the title of your presentation. I'm, I'm just going to put something there. My presentation. Whoops. Okay. Um, and then where it says click to add subtitle, you click there. And by the way, these little dotted lines that show up in the box initially, those won't show up on the screen when you play it. Um, by Cheryl Nance Durst. Okay. So there is my, my presentation. That's my title slide. This is what's going to be shown when people are coming in and sitting down. All right, so that's the first slide. Now we need to add another one. And that, you can do it right here. If you're on the Home tab, there's a, a one right here that says New Slide. If you are on the Insert tab, there's also a button that says New Slide. So it's on both of these first two tabs. Same thing. If you click the little triangle, anytime you see a little triangle next to something, it usually means more options. And if you click on that, you can choose what kind of slide you will put in. What we are doing is a title slide right now. That's what this is. 
So you want to leave that, you really only want there to be one title slide. We have different things. If you want to lay out the different sections, you may now want a section header. So I will choose that one. Um, and now it comes to this one. And my section is, the first section is introduction. And if I don't want anything here, um, I can get rid of this box by clicking on the edge of it. If I click on the edge of it, you'll see my, or my little thing turns into a four-way arrow. That's to click to select the box itself, and I can hit delete, and it gets rid of the box. If you click inside the box and hit delete, it will just try and delete any letters that are in it. If you click on the edge of the box and hit delete, it will delete the box itself. Okay. So um, that's my section heading. So I'm going to go to the slide where I actually do the introduction. And you can, some people don't like to do the section headings. They just like to jump right into the slide, but that's strictly a matter of personal preference. So I'm going to click on uh, where it says new slide. And what do I want to put in next? Um, um, content with caption. All of these are, are just different layouts. You can put them into whichever one you choose to do. Uh, I think I'm going to choose this one here, title and content. Um, I actually don't need a title since I did the uh, introduction slide over here. So I'm going to click on the edge of that one and delete it. And you can actually make these boxes bigger or smaller by clicking on the edges and pulling them if you'd like. But most of the time, I just leave them the way they are. Now, here's where I can do my bullet points, my key points. I click in the box. What are the key points I want to talk about in my introduction? Let's say I want to talk about my education. These ones that have content usually are bullet points and it automatically gives you one bullet. That's the little round dot. And when you hit enter, you go down to the next line. It gives you another one that is not white right now. It's grayed out. That's because you haven't typed anything. Once you type something there, it will turn white. My education, my experience in this topic. Uh, hit enter. Why you need to know this. And I think that's it, what I'm going to put now. And when you're putting uh, together a slide, you don't want to type entire paragraphs. That's not what the slide's for. If people wanted to sit there and read entire paragraphs, you could just print out a, a copy of it and give it to them and they can walk away and, and read it themselves. This on the slide is the bullet points. It's the highlights, the key points of the talk. The actual presentation itself is what you do. It's you talking. It's you expounding on this. Uh, this is just to give them a little um, kind of outline path to follow. And maybe, you know, you can put up a quote. It would be the, the longest thing I would put up on here. And you don't want to get too wordy because uh, nobody wants to sit there for 20 minutes and, and they're going to be trying to read the screen while you're talking and they're not going to get really anything out of either one. They're just going to, it's going to confuse them and they're, they won't be able to remember everything. So key points in the slide, expound on that in your actual talk. 
you can also create notes for yourself and print them out later so that you remind yourself what you want to talk about during this slide. The notes section is down here at the very bottom. If you click that, you get uh, it gets a little smaller and you get this little tiny place right in here to click and add your notes. Now, if you want to add extensive notes, you can uh, actually make this section bigger by clicking on the little line in between the two sections. If you do that, your arrow will turn into a double-headed arrow. You click and drag it bigger, and this gets smaller to compensate. So you just click in here. Now you also do not want to type paragraphs in here because these are the notes you're going to be looking at while you're doing your presentation. This is just reminders to yourself. You don't want to have a whole bunch of stuff to read in here because you don't want to have to stop when this slide comes up, read a whole paragraph while people are staring at you, and then talk. And remember to say, uh, da, 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 and um, illustrate with story about cat, whatever that is, as a reminder to yourself. And if you click notes again, that part goes away, but it will be saved with this slide. And when you print it out, you can print it out at the end, you can print out your notes. This is a very useful thing, especially when people get up in front of uh, people and blank out. Oh, it's so common. You see all those people looking at you and you're just like, uh, what was I gonna say? I don't remember. <laughs> so give yourself a little, a few little nudges. So do those notes only appear on our particular computer or screen? Yes. Okay. They do not, the notes do not appear during the slideshow presentation. Mm -hmm. And when you print out handouts for the people to take home, you can choose just to have the slides printed out. There's a special, mm -hmm. as a matter of fact, you actually have to select a special option to print out the notes. So the, the uh, attendees will not see the notes at all. So um, the next one, and, and I recommend, as you see, I'm kind of struggling to say, oh, well, what, what should I talk about next? What should I talk about next? It's best to plan out your presentation first and then create the slideshow to fit it. It's not a good idea to try and create the slideshow at the same time you're deciding what to talk about because it gets kind of confused that way. So just type out, write down your outline of what you want to talk about, how you're going to do it, what you're going to say, get that planned out in your head first, and then start creating your presentation based on what you've already decided to talk about and in what order. Now, if you go back and decide to switch up your topics in different orders, over here you'll notice as I've created the slides, it's created them in order here. And um, the one with the uh, colored box around it is the one I'm actually working on now. If I want to work on any of these others, I can just click on them. But let's say I have two or three different topics and I've decided I want to talk about one before the other. All I have to do to rearrange this is take the slide with that second topic, hold, click on it, drag it up in between these two, and boom, my topics are rearranged. Now, if you do that, I would then go through and play the presentation for yourself to make sure you got it in the right order and that you moved all the slides that you need to move. Because if you have two or three sides of slides about one topic and you move them in different order, you may have accidentally moved one in the wrong order. So always after you've rearranged things and before you actually have to give the presentation, Play it through for yourself and run it through in your head to make sure you've got everything, all the slides in the right order and everything. Because I can tell you, I've, I've been to a number of 
presentations where people have had to go they've come up they've gone to the next slide and it's something they weren't ready to talk about yet and they're like oh we're going to i'll come back to this slide in just a second we go to the next slide and and they have accidentally mis made a mistake in rearranging so i'm going to put this one back down here now this is basically how you go along and do each one of these um if i'm done with this one then i would create a new slide if if i'm doing section headings so then my new section would probably be um basic info you need to know whatever i'm talking about whoops and i'm going to get rid of this box by clicking on the edge and deleting it now i'm going to create a new slide uh, and i can either go back and choose title and content like i did before or i can choose one of these so content with caption anything that says content will give you the bullet points the little dots if it says ca uh, caption or anything that shows a little uh these little picturey things in here if it doesn't say content um you can also put pictures in there in those boxes so if i want this one i can click here to add text it's given me one with um, to, to type in and this one is not giving me bullet points but this one is you see so in this one i would probably type my key points and in this one maybe i'll insert a picture to illustrate these points over here on this side so you're under no obligation to put text in these boxes um you can put uh pictures and things in the box uh, okay so i am going to go to insert you have two options for pictures one says pictures and one says online pictures the difference is pictures is anything that you have already saved on your computer or on a flash drive you already have the picture you just need to tell it where it is so you, you can put it in the box. Online pictures is if you want to do a search for a particular picture or a clip art or, you know, let's say you want a big old dollar sign in this in this box here. You can do a, a search online search of a, a dollar sign clip art. Now, as a librarian, this is where I get into my little rant about intellectual property <laughs> and copyright law. Just because a picture has been posted to the internet for people to view does not mean that you have the right to add it to your presentation. Posting pictures on the internet does not mean that the person gives up their their right to the copyright or to their intellectual property you still need permission to use it which is why you should stop uh, and consider where the picture is coming from before you use it especially if this is going to be for if it's just going to be for your family reunion and nobody's going to see it but your family you can probably get away with a little more but if this is for a business or you have to do this in any kind of presentation where it's going to be shown to the public, you better make sure that you have the rights to use those pictures, which you can do a search uh, for like free clip art dollar sign, something like that. If you want like actual photos uh, to use, there are some free photo websites that you can use um there's a couple that's there's pixabay uh p-i-x-a-b-a-y i think i think it is pixabay there's also a place called uh pexels p-e-x-e-l-s are both places that will give you access to like photographs of people uh, if this is one like a gardening thing you could actually look up gardening and it would show you photos that people have taken and the photographers have 
posted them there to be allowed to be used. So please be very careful about which ones you use from online. So how this works is if you click pictures, if you click online pictures, it will take you straight to, uh, I believe it's Bing, a Bing search engine. Bing is the search engine that's owned by Microsoft. Okay. Let's say I have pictures here and let's look at my pictures. Um, these are ones that I have paid for from a service and we're going to put that one in. Oh, that is very big. Okay. Well, if you've ever used graphics before, you might notice that around all the pictures and around those little boxes, the text boxes, were stretcher dots. Well, technically, I think these are called the frame handles. I call them the stretcher dots. To make this smaller, what you want to do is grab one of the corner dots and drag it in toward the center of the image. Drag it toward the center till it gets the right size, and then I'll put it right there. And I can delete this box here if I want. So I'm going to click click that box in the background and delete it. And I don't need this title one, so I'm going to click the edge of that box and delete it. So that's how you insert pictures. Back on the insert tab, you have a couple of other things besides the pictures. Uh, if you click here screenshot, it will it will take you and let you snapshot the screen. Uh, if you do that, you basically you have you should have a print screen button on your computer on keyboard. Most of the Windows 7 or Windows 10 both also have something called a snipping tool. So if you go down to the start button in the bottom left hand corner or if you have a little search box, you can type snipping and it will bring up a little snipping tool to let you do a screen capture. But that's available if it if if you want. You can put in a table. Uh, shapes is obviously what it says. How these work is if you click on one, you then get this little crosshairs. You hold the button down, drag it cat a corner to make the shape, and let go. And then you can change the color and everything in the tab that pops up. I'm going to undo that. So that's how these shapes work. Smart art has diagrams and things as it, it describes here, which if you're doing an organizational chart or something like that, you can start that up. And you have the different piece parts here that you can put together and choose the different blocks and put them together to form the diagram you're you're wanting. I'm not going to go into that uh, because it's a not something I usually use, but it's available if you do that kind of thing. Charts is to create a chart based on a table. If you're going to do a chart, I find it easier to do it in Excel and then just copy and paste it into here. You can also put in things like a text box, a header and footer. That's a header and footer is information that goes at the top and bottom of the slide. That's not usually used on slideshows. There is also video and audio. OK, just to let you know, it is possible to put a video into your slide jump. It is possible to put a link to a, a YouTube video or something like that in your, your slideshow. But I would not recommend it because out of all of the times I have seen people try to do videos in slideshows at least a dozen times, I could probably think of two where it worked. Most of the times that I have seen people try videos didn't work, but it is available. If you are taking this someplace to give a presentation that's not your computer and your conference room, if you're doing an online video, you better darn well make sure 
that that place has Wi-Fi and that you know how to access the Wi-Fi and you have tested it before people start showing up, which means you need to get there at least half an hour early. Get everything set up and test that sucker. And the video on my PC, that's if you're taking your laptop. Now that is a safer bet. If you're taking your own laptop, you're saving the video on your computer and you're playing it from your computer, that's much safer than using somebody else's computer and trying to do online through Wi-Fi because you never know the Wi-Fi may not be fast enough they may say oh yeah we have Wi-Fi yeah it's easy to access yeah it's open to the public is it fast enough to show the video you want to show if you're doing it from YouTube that's a different matter altogether and you will need to think about ahead of time if you have a video what will you do if the video doesn't work keep that in mind ahead of time if you do an audio and same thing with audio files if you do an audio or a video have a plan about what to do if it doesn't work all righty now if you want to put an image on every single slide let's say you submit this presentation to your boss and they're like yeah this is good except they want the company logo on every slide you're like okay i don't want to go through and if i've got 30 slides i don't want to go through every single slide and do that insert picture insert picture insert picture well they have something called a master slide and that's under the word view so you have a couple of options. Right now you are in normal view. Outline view will, instead of the little boxes here, will give you a little outline of what's on, what you've typed in. Slide sorter, we'll put it this way so that you can like take these and, and easily pull them and rearrange them. Notes page will show you what the notes page looks like on the one you're looking at now. Slide master is the interesting one. So you have this title page here, and that's the style, and you can actually edit what this whole style looks like from this page. And then these are the different layouts that we had that we had before from when we were inserting the slides these are the different layouts so if you want the logo let's say on just on just slides with this layout style you can add the image to this page and it won't appear on anything else except the ones with that style if you add it to the master title style, it will usually, supposedly, appear on every slide on the first one. So from here, I can go to insert, insert a picture like I did before. And I believe I have the library logo saved somewhere on here. There it is. Oh, that's very big. So I'm going to grab the little dots in the corner, bring it in toward the center, and I'm going to move it down in the corner. Now, when I go back over to Slide Master, I can close this view. And I, I'm going to go back to the normal view here. And if you now notice, I'm clicking on every single one, and the logo is on every single one. As long as I put it on the first one up here at the top of the slide master view, it should appear on every subsequent slide. And every one that I insert from now on, 
will also have the logo on it. Now, that's basically how you insert things and, and type things. Now, if you want to, let's say, change the color, like I told you, you could change the color. On the design tab, you can actually go back and choose any of those other schemes that you did before. Or you can choose any of the color variations that they showed you before. But you have even more options. Over here, if you click this last little symbol right here on the, on the scroll bar, they have colors where you, you can choose other pre-made uh, color combinations. Or you can create your own custom color. So when I create my own custom color, if I want a background color, I will put it in the first slot. And if I want my accent color over here, this part, I will put it in there. And you got to play around with it because sometimes you're like, oh, well, maybe I put it in the wrong one. OK, so maybe this one is the first one and then this one is the, the third one, but this one is the second one. You know, it, you got to play with it. You can also change the font style. Uh, background style, this is how you would put if you, let's say, um, started without a template. Remember on that very first page, you can start with a blank one and design it yourself. You can actually over here under format background, that's where you would create your own custom background if you started with a blank page with the blank slides. I, I find that kind of too much work. You can also alter this a little bit and you can play with these later. These are all ones that are just little added bonusy stuff that you really don't need to play with. But I just want to make sure that you know that these options are available if you want to do this. Um, by the way, if you did the format background, it would change it just on, it should change it just on one slide, not on all of them, unless you click apply to all. If you just change one of these and forget to click that button, you'll only be able to be changing one. So you see the one color change, but not the rest. You have to click apply to all. I'm gonna reset. You have to click apply to all before all of them will be changed. Now we're gonna talk about the fancy stuff, like animations and transitions, which are your next two tabs. Transitions is how the computer switches from one slide to the next. Animations is how it treats these bullet point texts. Now, I'm going to show you what this slideshow would look like if I just played it. If I'm going to do the slideshow, right up here, this is where you play your slideshow. And this is exactly how you would play it when you're ready to present it. By the way, if you're using somebody else's computer in order to play a slideshow, a PowerPoint presentation slideshow, that computer has to have PowerPoint because you have to open it up in PowerPoint, go to slideshow and click from the beginning. This is how you actually do a slideshow presentation, a PowerPoint slideshow. There's my title page that comes up and you'll notice until I move my mouse, it doesn't, the arrow doesn't appear. Um, there's my first page. This is what's going to be played, be up on the screen when people walk in. When I'm ready to go to the next page, I can hit a key on my keyboard or I can click the mouse, whichever is convenient. So I'm going to click my mouse. And this is my introduction slide. I click my mouse again. 
there's my what I'm going to be doing in that one. I click my mouse again. There's my next section. Click it again. This is what I'm doing. Click it again. And I didn't put anything. When I reach the end, it will go to a black screen so that uh, people don't have to stare at my PowerPoint while I'm trying to talk to them. It's kind of distracting. So it just gives a blank page, a black screen for them to uh, not be distracted with. And then it says, end of slideshow, click to exit. You click and it goes back to here. So you'll notice when you just click the mouse or the key on the keyboard, the next slide just appears. It doesn't do anything fancy. If I wanted to do something fancy, I click on the slide that I want to say, how is this going to come in? How is this going to appear? That's a transition. So I go to transition and I can, I can click one of these and that's how it will appear. And I've got a ton of these. I can click this little down triangle or I can you click the, la the bottom one to make it all appear. These are all the different ones. Woo. And whoops, sorry. And the first one on the list is none. So if you, if you change it and then decide you don't want one, you can click on none and, and get it back to the way it was before. So. I'm going to do wind. Yeah, OK. Uh, they have sounds that will appear or that, that you can do it while it appears. Um, I don't know if if I choose drum roll, I'm not sure if that will um, appear, if that will go over the zoom so that you can hear it, but I'll try it. Then you can set how long it takes to do it. You don't want to mess with that really because if you t set that to 10, it's going to take 10 seconds while it flutters in the wind. No. You also want to make sure it says on mouse click, not the timed one here. If you have to do it, a timed one, you can actually say after the old slide is up for 30 seconds, you can go to the next one. Yeah, no human beings you, you talk different amounts of time might not be good so leave that part alone is my recommendation and you can apply it to all i could go through here to each one and choose a different transition but watch what happens if i'm going to do my slideshow all right, looks professional, right? There we go. I don't know, I heard the drum roll. I don't know if you did, but wow. Okay, so that's a, an interesting one. I click again. Oh, that's a different one. Click again and a different one. And I can assign different sounds to each one of these. Not a good idea. By the way, if you need to stop in the middle of a slideshow, you don't have to go all the way to the end. Go ahead and just hit the escape key on your keyboard, top left hand corner of your keyboard. I would recommend sticking with one transition and tailor it to your audience. If you're presenting to little kids, yeah, okay, maybe you want a different one on each slide to keep them entertained. Or maybe you want to do wind on each one. But if this is for adults, Keep it simple. I would, I would generally not use most of the ones that say exciting. Okay, so that's not too bad, but I would take the drum roll off and no sound. Generally speaking, I, I tend to stick with one of these first ones. The more serious the topic, the less fancy you want to get. And I'm going to click this button that says apply to all. That will make all of them come in the same way. 
so that it's because you you want them listening to your words you don't want them saying oh what's the next slide going to appear how is it going to appear is that it's distracting then you have something called animations which is how the the words appear on each slide these are grayed out on this slide because i don't have a bunch of words i this is just a heading but on this one here um well actually i could do that you have to select uh, put the uh, click on the line where you've typed like my education then you can say how is my education going to appear in well let's make it float in okay let's say i want a different one for the second one and click in the second line and do a split oh wow they've changed that sorry hey it looks like you have just have to choose one slide uh you have to choose one animation style you can click on the words and uh yeah. okay and you'll notice that there's one two three that's the order they're going to come in when you click the mouse if you decide to rearrange the order you're going to talk about these uh, so if I click on the number three, I can move it up to earlier number two. But if I do that, I probably want to, you know, cut the words out and paste it in between there. But you can rearrange them over here. And you also have this option for the click or to time it, which again, I don't recommend. You have effect options under here by paragraph, which means each line at a time are all at once i i generally like their paragraph yeah and so it goes like that so now if i go and i play my slideshow from the beginning i click and i click my mouse okay introduction i click my mouse and it just stays there because the words do not appear until i click the mouse click I talk about that click I talk about that click I talk about that and next next slide and I hit escape to go back now the and the transition has a button that says apply to all so you can make them all come in the same way the animations um, does not have a button that says apply to all so if you want the same style of animation for each one of these that contains the more more things you you will need to do the same animation and go to animations and choose it as far as i know there's no way to apply the same animation style to every every slide unless it unless you could do it under the master let's see if you can i've never actually tried all right slide master close i wonder if that worked eh, trying something new Oh, okay. All right, so that did work. Never actually tried that before. So if you go to view and choose the slide master and then put the animation style on that first master slide, uh, it will apparently do it on all of them. And it will also apparently override any one that you've previously done. Because I did the grow and turn, but on the slide master, I put just to fade in or to push in, float in. That's the word. And it did that instead of the one I chose for that slide. So good to know. 
Okay. It also is under the slideshow, and, and that's all the transitions and animations. It's, it's pretty much the same thing over and over again. Under slideshow, I've been showing you from the beginning. Uh, you can actually start it from the current slide if you want to just start here. Present online, that uh, gives you a link and, and uploads it to offices, computers to save it. Uh, you probably don't want to do that. Uh, I've never done a custom slideshow. Most people don't, but you might want to play around with that if you're wondering. You can hide a particular slide. Um, if you decide this that slide doesn't apply to this presentation, you don't have to go in and delete it and save a different copy. You can just hide that one slide or a, a whole section of slides. Like if I'm not going to talk about this section here, I will hide that one and I'll hide this one. And when I play it, it will jump straight from here to here. So you can tailor your presentation to the, the audience or to the, the time you have allotted to fit it in without having to go in and actually alter your actual presentation and do too much work. If you have a timed one, you can rehearse the timings here. And you can actually record it here to play it back so that you can tweak your, your own presentation. Review is all the normal stuff like your spell check is right here under review. Um, does anybody have a question about how to create a slide or do anything like that? It's fairly simple. Once you've got, once you've created one slide, you create the other slides very, very similarly. It's just repeating steps over and over again based on what you want to present. Printing. Over here under the file, here's where you can save it. Tell it where to save it. It saves like normal. But the printing is the most important part. If you go to print it, the default is one slide on each page. Right here, where it says full page slides, this is where you change it. If you click notes pages, this is where it will print out one slide to each page, but it will also print out all the notes. See here where I put my notes? This is the, the paper that you're going to work from. Okay. You can do an outline if you want to give people an outline of it. With It will give the whole text, but not the pictures or, or um, slides themselves. But here's another one under handouts. This is the most popular one for printing handouts, where it says three slides. This will print each slide big enough to be read and give the people room to take notes. Otherwise, you will be having people that will be trying to write down everything that's on the slide. Print these out, staple them together and give them to them. And then they will just be taking notes. They won't bother writing down everything. And you'll have their attention more. They won't be as distracted. So those are the two uh, most important parts, I think, are notes page and three slides. You don't really want to do this uh, because, I mean, if that's a handout, they can't read that. All right, so if there's no questions, I'm going to stop sharing. And then I'm going to talk about the handouts, common mistakes in creating presentations and common mistakes in presenting. In creating presentations, you can, remember I said you could change the font up there under the style 
uh, on the design tab. You probably don't want to do that very often because if you pick the wrong font, you can't read it very well. These things are going to be need to be read. Imagine you're sitting in a in a ballroom in a hotel. You want to create your presentation that's going to be able to be viewed to the back of the room. Always think about how big your room is. Make it bigger letters, make it simpler letters. Ariel um, is a good one, Helvetica. Uh, anything that doesn't have, not Times New Roman, don't go for all sorts of italics, uh, no script. Oh, for crying out loud, no script fonts. Nobody can read those on a screen. I can barely read them on a piece of paper. Uh, and you don't want people going, huh? What, what is that? I'm having trouble reading it. You want them listening. Um, be aware of contrast. If you, you'll notice I picked the, the purple and it's a fairly dark background and they gave me white letters. If you're creating your own uh, color scheme or if you're creating your own presentation straight from a blank page, you're not using a template. Be very aware that when you have a dark background, you must have light lettering. If you have a light background, use dark lettering. Do not have a medium background because then it's going to be hard to show anything on it. Make sure there's contrast. Uh, if you are using a fancy, uh, a special font and you're not going to be using your own computer, you're going to have to, when you save your file, you're going to have to click a button that says embed the font so that it will save the font with the presentation. Because if you use a font that's on your computer, but not on somebody else's, but you take your presentation on a flash drive and take it to their computer, your presentation won't be able to use the font because they don't have it on their computer. So if you're using a special particular font that you've downloaded just for this presentation, when you save it, you'll have to embed the font in it. Don't be too wordy on those slides. Like I already told you that, no, no whole paragraphs, just short to the point key points. Avoid using too many colors. It's that whole distraction thing I've been talking about. The sound is distracting, the animation's distracting, too many different colors is distracting. Be careful about distracting your audience. You want them focused. It's hard enough to get them to sit there for a 20-minute presentation, being bored and falling asleep. You don't want them distracted also. Okay, one of these says bad use of animation and sound. I've already talked about that. And I've already talked about the copying images from websites. All right, the other, the last page on the handouts is common mistakes in presenting. Because I know most people hate to get up in front of other people. They hate to have people looking at them and they hate doing presentations. So here's a few things you really should do during a presentation. First of all, know what you're talking about. Yes, you can flub a few things here and there and maybe not know everything like I wasn't sure about the slide master with the animation style, but we found that out, didn't we? It's okay to, for somebody to ask you questions and go, you know, I've never done that before. I can try it. If we have time, let's try it. If not, I'll try it. I'll get back to you. Leave me your contact information. It's another thing completely when somebody asks you a question to say, um, I don't know. This isn't my presentation. I didn't create it. My boss just said to come here and do it. That, that's a different thing altogether. If you don't know anything about the topic, then why should they listen to you about any of it? Why should they believe you? 
So know at least the part you're talking about. Yeah, it's okay not to know everything, but at least know it, something. And I think I've already talked about the slides are not your whole presentation. What you're saying is your presentation, not this slide. You don't just, don't just sit there and read the screen, read the slides. They can do that. I mean, I have seen presentations where people stood there and they did the slide and they read the slide word for word and then didn't expound upon it. They can do that. Yeah. Um, next point, TMI, too much information. PowerPoint presentations are going to be simple to the point. You do not want to do a 30 or 40 minute PowerPoint presentation because people will be falling asleep. They're sitting there, they're staring at a screen. It's usually dark in the room um, and they're sitting there going. Yeah. So don't be too wordy. Think sound bites, short, pithy, to the point, interesting, you know, that kind of thing. If you have more to say, have a question and answer period at the end and say hey this is it um if you don't have any questions if that's it feel free to leave if you have questions i'll be sticking around for the next 15 20 minutes and i'll talk more or answer more uh, if you need um, a little more information on a certain section same thing about way too many slides that goes along with it don't do fifty thousand slides sitting there watching them go one slide next slide next slide next slide next slide you know it's all right short and pithy and don't forget your audience oh my gosh um new presenters have a tendency to look at the screen when they're presenting, which is behind them, which means they turn their back to the audience and go, okay, introduction, why do you need to know this? Well, you need to know because this part here and there, and then every once in a while, they'll turn back and make sure people are listening. They don't want to stare at the back of your head. Remember, the audience is in front of you, okay? If you need to look at a screen, have the computer screen in front of you. So you won't be looking at them, but at least you'll, you know, be facing them. And if you get worried about people looking in people's eyes or whatever, pretend. You know, every once in a while, glance over the audience and, and do that. And look at, look at the tops of people's heads. You don't have to look at their eyes. You just have to pretend. I'm not looking in your eyes. I'm looking in a computer camera right now. I can't see any of your eyes. But it looks like I'm looking at you. If you're worried, just look at people's foreheads and the tops of their eyes and once and or just scan your eyes over the crowd so that it looks like you're paying attention to them but you're not resting and focusing on anyone in particular if you look at people in the eyes or focus on one person that you don't know it kind of takes you out of it and you're concentrating on them not on what you're saying although if you have a friend in the audience you might want to actually focus it toward them if you're really nervous and pretend you're just talking to them um, because you'll be a little less nervous that way. Okay, um, anybody have any questions about what we talked about today? Uh, well, I don't see anything. And I don't see anything on the chat. Can you show us one more time how to get rid of that 
box that you did earlier on and then you had it delete? Sure. So whenever you have a, a text box or any kind of box, um, oh, let's say like this one. When you move, if you click inside the box, you'll get the blinking cursor and it thinks you want to type. So you can't hit delete right now. If you want to delete the box itself, you have to move up right on the edge of the box. See how here where it turned into a four headed arrow? You click there. You will know you did it right because the dots are still there, but the blinking cursor is gone. That means you have selected the box itself. Now I can hit delete and it will go away. Does that answer it? I think so. Okay. I'm going to have to play around with it, but I think that's yeah. it not takes in the corners because it seems like they move the box around. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Well, if you click and you can also do that if you click on the edge of the box like that and you hold the button down, you can pull the box. But if you just click once and let go and then hit the delete key, it will delete the box. All right. Any other questions? Okay, I, um, I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording then.